yeah, so when I did the fruit tart, it had like a pastry crust at the base. Um, so I'm just going to show how to do that because it's like a really, it's a really simple method and uh, it's kind of how I do a lot of my vector displacement. Um, so I'm just taking texture coordinates. So I've, I've got a round cube here and just put a subdivision on it. Um, we're going to be using generated coordinates, and I'm going to be using the Z to mask out the base. Um, so map range. Um, and I'm just going to use like a really small amount off the bottom. So I'm going to go from 0 to 0.1 as 1 to 0. So I've like isolated that section. And then I can use a combine XYZ and just drop this into the Z. Uh, this one is like much too high. So that's right now this is going like really high up inside the mesh there. Um, if you're going, like if your mask distance is 0.1, then you're going to want to displace by twice that. So 0.2, and that's going to make that flat across the bottom. I'm not really sure why it's two times, but we'll take it. Um, so that's got me the flat base, and now I need to isolate the next section, which I'm doing for the pastry. So I'm going to use another map range, and this one's going to go from 0.1 as my start point to 0.2. So now we've got this whole next section up here. And I'm going to use this to stretch out these sections. So instead of it being like this angle on the sides, I want it to move out and I want it to be steeper. So if I take my X and my Y, I need these to be centered. So I'm just going to take another generated coordinate down here and subtract 0.5 just so that they are more like how we are familiar with object coordinates. And then I'm going to separate these. So I'm going to be using my X and my Y component of this. And I'm just taking math, set this to multiply. And this goes into my, uh, this one's the Y. This one's the X. And we're just going to take that with this second map range that we just made. So right now you can see that we've got uh, this shape already happening. And I can control the top and the bottom radiuses with my output from the map range now. Uh, so this top edge was set to zero, the max is set to zero, so it's not displacing at all, but I can increase this. And you can see that it's, it's taking everything above it as well, but that's fine, we can mask that out. And then the bottom, we can also increase the size of this one. So if you want to have a bit more control, uh, you could always put a RGB curve as well in here. Um, so if I was doing that, I would probably map range before and after. So if I go from zero to one, right, that's giving me a smooth gradient and that's going to be the full range of my RGB curve. And I can map range afterwards to reset that range to be uh, the range that I want. That was like 0.3 to 1.2 and from 0 to 1. So now this RGB curve is going to let me set the profile on the side of that Pi case. So we can use these masks a bit more as well. So I want to take the top of this and I want to move it upwards so that I've got a taller Pi case. Um, you don't need so much geometry for a pie case because it's right at the bottom. And if you're doing like the rest of the pie details on top, you can put all of your, uh, you basically want to preserve geometry to be used on those other detailed areas. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up this top section, but I don't want to just stretch it up at this point. I want it to be like a gradual increase across the whole length of the pie case, starting at zero. So it starts a value of zero here and we've got a value of one here. And so everything above doesn't get deformed. It just gets 
translated. And then you have that like gradual change of stretch over the actual pie. And so we've got a map range here, which goes from zero to one. I can just drop another math node on the, this is the Z stream here. And if I was to just plug that straight onto there, then uh, that has not done what I want. Oh, maybe we want to add this actually. So you can see that that is stretched up that whole top section when I've just added that. So the bottom's not moved. It's just pulled up everything else. And I'm using linear here. So this is doing a linear, uh, a linear change over that edge. I can use a multiply here now to control how much that's being offset by. So then we can change the angle of our our different radiuses here and here. We've got the pi profile and I just want to have this top edge so it kind of comes in like this. So I basically need to take a little section here just on the side so I've got like a band running around that I want to scale inwards in x and y and also move down. Um, and to do this so that this whole section has a constant, this whole section is at zero, and then you've got the gradient over this. So this is why we use map ranges all the time, because you've got, uh, you basically have that control, you've got the two ends as constants, and you've got the control for the gradient in between. So I'm going to take another map range, again on my Z, uh, and the top of the pie case was at two, or sorry, 0.2, and I'm going to go up to 0.25, just so I've got something little. Oh, sorry, yeah, 0 0.25. Um, and I always end up flipping these around just so I can see where my black point is, so I can see exactly where those marks are. Um, so I'm not moving the bottom, I'm just moving the top section with the gradient. So what I can do now is I can take this as my controller to multiply again in X and Y. Um, so take this up here. I should probably comment these. So this is the uh, crust top edge. This is the crust diameter and this stuff is the ah you did it with the object space added through a mix RGB. Oh uh, yeah, well if you don't need the um if you don't need the mix factor, then it's always cheaper to use vector math, or if you're using scalar, then you can use scalar math. I feel like there are more uh, precise ways to do this stuff, if you can actually like do the whole definition of the thing, but I don't know, I find it's kind of easier to just break it down into these minor steps, because vector displacement gets out of hand so quickly, and I don't, I don't really worry too much about optimization either with these big trees, just because they're so... It doesn't matter if they're performant because they're not being used for anything real. Um, so there we go. This is my crust height. So I want to be multiplying by this one. This is my centered coordinates. I'm just going to take that out of the frame with Alt P. Center it. Yeah, if you're working on big trees as well, try and put stuff in frames and annotate it properly because it will save you so much time when it comes to like 
going back through your tree trying to put materials and masks and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to take my X into here, my Y into here. Um, so these are actually going to be negative values because we're shrinking. And then I'm going to, just for keeping this readable, I'm going to put this as separate. And then I'm going to use a vector math set to add just on here like this. So you can see we've stretched out that top section. I'm going to be doing a little bit of shrinking. So that's too much. We just want to come in a little bit like that. And then I also want to have this uh, control AZ, uh, AZ value, um, which I think I can just do that as a constant. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to put this through a, for the Z. I'm just going to put this through a multiply. So I can just put a constant in this second socket and put that into the Z there. In this case, we're not going to use linear, we're going to use smoother steps. So I've got a little bit of uh, rotation over that edge there. So you can see that I can move that down a little bit as we go. And uh, I can change how much I want this to be scaling down. So you could do another one if you wanted it to be like fully rounded over. I think for mine, I just did like a little bit of a, a little bit of softness on it. And then, cause I was basically like putting extra bits on the outside, which I will do now. Um, so for a pie crust, often in Pythons, you've got these kinds of, I don't know what you'd call them, like the ripples around the outside of the circle. So it's not like a perfect circle. It's got all those little wiggles. Um, so again, it's a very similar process. We're going to be scaling in the original X and Y, or sorry, the centered X and Y. It's super easy when you're doing vector displacement on a sphere, if you're doing something cylindrical or generally cylindrical like this. Um, so I'm going to take my centered coordinates. I'm going to add a texture, gradient texture, so it's to radial. So now we've got a radial texture. I'm going to just add a math node set to multiply so I can have like a, basically a scale, a scalar scale. And I'm going to put a sign in here as well. So now if I put this up to like a hundred, you can see that we've got uh, ripples, right? But it's going from a range of minus one to one. Um, so I'm going to just add one to it. And that's just going to keep it going like a, like between zero and two now. And I need to add this specifically onto this band. So I've got a range mask, but you can just use this with a, um, actually let's make one just so it's not using presets. Um, so I'm going to take my Z coordinate. Just going to take another map range down here. So I'm going from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, which is fine. Um, and I'm also going to grab another one, which is going in the opposite direction. Uh, so I can just flip the outputs there. Now I can multiply these two together. Or we'll do a minimum either way. Um, so this is giving me the band around the outside. Uh, what exactly is the difference between multiply and modulo in vector math? Um, I mean, modulo is like a, is its own thing. So if you have a graph, right, like this, so this is like just a linear graph. If you were to multiply the graph, you would essentially be making it steeper, right? So like times two would be uh, like twice the steepness. But if you were to do modulo, say you were doing modulo at, uh, at one, right? If these are my increment markers, what it would do is it would go like up, it would reach one and it would go back to zero, up to one, go back to zero, up to one, go back to zero. And modulo does that at whatever scale value you give it. Um, 
so in vector math it's exactly the same it's just doing it with uh, x y and z components at the same time um but yeah so they're very useful modulos we use them a lot for doing masks like alternating masks um, for something like this where you want to have like a smooth transition you're going to want to use something like a sign because that's giving you that that wave already um, so i've got my size here my things i'm going to put this through a map range just so that i have that control on the output here and then i can put this onto a multiply x and y so i'm just going to duplicate these ones down that I have in the diameter and cut those inputs connect them up again so these are now multiplying my horizontal scale um, which again I can just add a combine x y z connect those in and then we can add this vector to the other vectors so straight away you can see that we've got this going on um, which is good but already it's taking way too much of just like everywhere um, so we want to restrict this to the actual pie crust and have a little bit of like a fade on the bo top and bottom so for that we're going to scale uh, we're going to scale this output here just with a, a vector scale and I'm going to use this map range minimum here as my mask so now if we go to the principle you can see that we've got this going on so you can see basically the profile of these so at the moment this is going from uh, uh, the full height and overlapping so I'm just going to reduce this to like 0.15 or 0.12 and then equally this one's going to go from 0.18 just so that I've got like a little bit of fall off and I'm going to split, set these both to a smoother step and I'm also going to just set a value here into both of these so I can control the amount of the influence it's having um, and yeah you can still go in here and change so this looks like it's really widely spaced so I'm going to double that and I'm also going to take these a little bit higher so they go up to like 0 0.2, 0.2 or something, just so it goes up to the top of the pie crust there. So at this point, you would just want to be able to take this top section, which again, we're going to mask, but basically never mask with less than or greater than unless you're doing alpha, um, just because that's the only way you're going to get a hard fall off your alpha. But in this case, we want to take a top section with a mask uh, a map range so again take another one of these we're going from point two ish uh, 0.25 uh, and above so we're going up to one because we're using generated coordinates so this is a range of zero to one please multiply by two pi before the sign so the wavelength of sign is two pi so um I guess similar to wait so about 32 tau is the full thing 32 times tau there we go so that is now in a full whole number of wavelengths for you there <laughs> um so yeah so we basically we've got this top section now use the uh, the values on here as your from and to so that you've got like a, a range actually we don't want this to go up to one because this is our a mask so we're gonna just pull that down to around here just so we've got smooth fall off on there and now we can start doing stuff on this top section if you so wished um, so like on my pie cast my pie crust before I had like a little cream down and then I put all of my fruit on the top section and used alpha so for that I would have like a map range like this uh, 
Do we know a good resource for Blender math commands like tau, frame, etc? It's anything that Python can interpret. I think I'm right in saying that. So pi, frame, uh, all of the Python maths things, I think they're in Blender by default. Um, so you don't have to like import PPY or anything. You can just uh, like go ahead and use them. I don't know if there is a good resource. I imagine there'll be some like Python documentation that you could use. Um, I feel like Iad would be the best person to ask for that. I find it's kind of fun. It's just like you occasionally come across a new command. Um, so I don't know. I kind of feel like it's spoilers when you get to read the list of them. You know, it's like you're jumping ahead 10 levels. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I use Blender like it's a game though. So <laughs> yeah, cheat sheet. Um, yeah, so for me, everything with vector maths, vector displacement is basically just sculpting. So I'm taking a mask for a region. Um, I basically use the map range like it's brush fall off in sculpting. Uh, you've got to think about it like you're not using dynamic topology though, because you don't gain topology when you move stuff. So that's why, um, let me just show on a plane, let's hide this. Uh, so let's make a new material here, displacement and subdivision. So if we wanted to make a circular extrusion that was like 90 degrees, so if we're doing a cylindrical extrusion out of here, the sort of tempting thing to do, so I'm just going to center this coordinates. Again, always use generated with vector displacement because the generated coordinates will come with your surface as it's displaced. Um, so I'm centering that. I am using a length node. And this is what you see people do a lot. So basically I want to extrude up this section, which is less than 3.6. Add a converter, combine XYZ, put this into the Z, put this into you. The displacement but you can see the issue here horrible topology now we just completely mangled it um so if you want to get a straight up and down displacement like this you have to do uh we're going to take a map range we're going to go from so if before our thing was at 3.6 we're going to go from 3.6 to like 3.2 or something so we've got this gradient, right? This bit of fall off here. So we've still got some shearing artifacts up top. Um, so we could come down even lower. And we could also use something like a smooth step, just so that we're rounding out, rounding out that corner and again at the bottom. But now you've got something which is conical rather than vertical sided. So we're going to use the same map range here. We're going to take our centered coordinates, use a separate XYZ, multiply. Um, actually, do you know what we could do? Because this is cylindrical, we could put the scale beforehand. So vector math scale, put that on there. And then we can take our X and our Y into here. So you can see that we've already just like massively increase the size of the top there. You can always add a math node in here. But what I'm actually going to do is add an RGB curve. And now you've got these controls for the profile. Um, so this itself is giving you a lot of like free control over how you want the profile to be. And also you're not getting any of the awful mesh torsion issues that you were getting before. Um, yeah, I know that was a bit of a breakneck walkthrough, but uh, if anybody's got any questions, 